Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemoff. And over there, we got John Lewandowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. Hey, you're, we're tired as it's uh, 1130 here, but we've got way too much news. We've been slacking YouTube. I'm so sorry. We've got so much for you, though. Watch this video because I can't even put a thumbnail on it. Yeah. There's no way to thumbnail this. There's no way to even start with this, but we're going to start in it. So um, what we're starting off with is the two things revolving around the Boston Bruins organization. One, we're going to start off with the semi-bad, semi-good. Uh, semi-bad because uh, Tuka Rask announced his retirement from the NHL after 15 seasons with the Bruins. Tried, the 34-year-old goalie tried to come back after having hip surgery. He could not play to the level he's accustomed to. Right. And then got hurt again. So in that situation, um, I wish I wish him a, a speedy recovery. Um, I, I I wish that he had a little more of a chance, but as you get older, trust me, the minute you hit thirty, body goes. <laughs> Speaking from experience, I know. Right. Um, took her ask amongst um, goalies all that played with Boston. He ranks first in games played, first in wins, second in goals against average, second in same percentage, and second in shutouts. Um, the Boston Bruins will be uh, now relying on Linus Allmark and Jeremy Swayman. Um, to man the pipes for them, um, you know. Uh, um, uh, he said, uh, words from Tukarask. Let's just give you his uh, uh, his uh, report here of what he said. Well, I am sad to say goodbye to the game I love. I am very thankful that I have shared these 15 years with the greatest teammates, fans, and the best sports city in the world. These are his words, not ours. Don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> for you Prince fans that are watching. Um, <laughs> um, while these experience are, experiences were all incredible, what I remember most above all of them is the bond I have with my teammates, coaches, and staff, and the memories that we will always have, and the friendships that will last a lifetime. Um, Rask also said that the Bruins are 26, 15, and three who are second in the wild in the second wild card um, in the uh, to get into the playoffs, and they can't afford to wait for him to find his game. So it's it's right. a hell and you know you can't just keep having setbacks. No. It's like you said, we wish him the best. Yeah. Um, and it was a really class act by him, um, especially given what happened later that afternoon, that evening, when he did announce it, what happened in the game they played that night. Right. Um, that is unacceptable. Right. And that we're about to go get into because Brad Marchand is suspended again. He kind of reminds me in, of me in high school. It's like you show up and you just get suspended because they don't want to deal with you. Right. Some witness protection, apparently. <laughs> like your camera. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, folks, I just wanted to say that, you know, uh, um, you know, I, I wish Tukarask is be the best. Um, always a good goalie. Good for a chuckle if you ever want to look up some stuff. Watch up, uh, uh, look up uh, Tuka Rask, um, Stick Slam Fails. I know it's making fun of him, but it was always good for a good chuckle. 
Hey, he went to slam the stick into the bench and fell. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, it was bad. But this is where we really got to start drawing the line. Brad Marchand punched Tristan Jari in the face. Then after a linesman restrained him, got free of the linesman and smacked him in the face with a hockey stick. Right. Now, as a person who's a goalie, had you done that to me, I'm going to jail. Because <laughs> mm. I'm not stopping until you're bleeding. But that's me right. as a player. That's me in my competitive zone. That's my battle. That was the kind of player I liked because I grew up watching guys like Patrick Waugh and Ray Emery and uh, uh, what is that? Felix Potvin and right. Chris Osgood and Mike Vernon and <laughs> mm. you could just say that everyone who ever had a fight with uh, oh, Garth Snow um uh shields i think it's sam shields uh for uh buffalo was always getting into it with snow um just watch some of the fights from the 90s i i grew up in that goalie fights in the 90s were awesome troy gross yep. last uh, the last year we played uh you know uh magnus helberg had one uh Chris Mason had a goalie fight. Um, uh, Jan Lossick for the Admirals had a goalie fight. Just rattling off a few Admirals goalie fights here. So, um, no, uh, I, I, I'm truly surprised that he didn't go after him. After right. Uh, truly surprised, but I'm, I'm surprised more of the Penguin players didn't. He has gotten six games. This is his second suspension this season, his eighth of his career, and the fifth or the sixth fine he's getting because he's getting fined as well. Um, according to the coach of the Bruins, this one, he, yes, he lost his discipline. No, but I don't about it. We'll sit down and We've had our share of sit-downs. I think that Brad has been doing a pretty good job for the most part of controlling his emotions. Huh? What game were you watching? Ryan. What have you been watching? I see him losing about once or twice a game. Yeah. I, I, I don't understand it either. So with that, um, six games, not enough for me. Not right. For he didn't go out. Six for just like, okay. And, and, and to put this in perspective, okay, Jari just robbed him too. Right. And yeah, he chirped him a little. I could see that in the video. He turned his head to him and said something. But when you go around a referee, the goalie, so it looks like you're skating behind the net, and then you go around and back forward and then sucker punch a guy in the side of the head. Yeah. Please be a man and, you know, skate up to him and punch him. You know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm just not a fan of Brad Marchand. I wouldn't even be a fan of him if he was on our team. I just don't like that style. Oh, there's a difference between goon and just a bad player. Right. Goons I can handle. I know it's part of the game. This is not part of the game. No, it isn't. And 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 that's something that we've always said that we we prize or pride ourselves um, as players and as former players on being students of the game. I'm still learning the game. I'm 32 years old and I'm yeah. still learning new stuff every day about the game. I'm a constant student of the game. I mean, I watch Admirals replays every game just to see where, where our defense is, what system we're running, what we're doing, who was out of position, what we could have done differently. 
I'm a student of the game. I'm I'm a consummate pro when it comes to doing stuff like this podcast. You may you may not hear it from me when I talk about it, but and I think I should more. But had I had the ability to actually get like a green screen and pull it up and show you what I'm looking at and what I'm talking about, that may be a little different. Um, next year, I might actually do a hockey 101 video, which will be fun for <laughs> fun, fun, fun for me. <laughs> um but no uh in that note um you know uh i think it should have been a little more i think eight games would have been sufficed at minimum right um if he doesn't learn from this one i think you've got to step it up into the eight to ten so um so there's all I have there on that one. Um, this is our NHL news segment. We haven't even got to like AHL or ECHL news in our segment yet. Right. So we've got a ton of NHL news for you. Um, we're saving some of the best for last because the last one's going to be a long conversation. Um, John, uh, beyond that, do you think there's anything else the league could do at this point to kind of hold Marchand accountable for his actions at this point beyond suspending him? I know banning him from the league, they can't really do that. But oh, They can't really do that, but um, I don't know. I would have liked to see a longer suspension, too. I mean, just for the double action. I'm not talking right. about, about just giving him for the one thing. You're talking about a high stick to the head intentionally or head or neck area. So right. then now, now you're talking about if if that stick cuts wrong, you're talking about there's a lot of arteries, a lot of stuff right here that could lead to long-term injuries, let alone getting hit in the fit head moments before could cause right. a concussion. And then now you got hit in the head again. Yeah. You know, um, it's it's just one of those. I, I think player safety is at this point necessarily needs to think about how they interact with the NHLPA and, and maybe hold some of these guys a little more accountable for their actions. And yes, I know it means, may mean at one point in time, uh, one of our guys may have to bite a bullet, but. You know, um, I'm talking. I'm thinking of the overall safety of the game because I see guys smooth footing. I see guys getting hit to the head all the time, and you don't get the call anymore. They're not calling them anymore. They're just suspending guys for them now. You know, they're not calling it as a penalty anymore. They just, you know, okay, keep going, and and then after the game, you're suspended for that. Well, you didn't call it a penalty. How? Huh? Why? You know, I, I think you gotta you gotta start calling those two. Um, just hold the uh, referees just as accountable to keep the game under control. Yeah, you know, and 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 on the flip side, um, I think that Chris Latang for who was the defenseman that was right there should have been accountable and understood that Marchand was right there and knew this. Right. Um, Chris Letang, um, uh, a long-term veteran, should have seen this coming. It's Brad Marchand. Um, I know that I have some Boston Bruins fans that are friends of mine. I have not talked with them about this yet, but we'll see where that gets me. Um, in other news, the Canadians fired their head coach. Uh, yep. I believe uh, his name is Dominique. Darshman, Darshman, Dusharm. Oh, if I butchered it, I butchered it. Um, he was fired after taking the Canadians to the Cup last year. They didn't win it, but he they got there. Right. Um. Um. We have a new head coach. One of my favorite players to watch growing up. I love the smaller hockey players because I was one. I was a UC Soros style goalie, five eleven, not much on the side, but had a lot of athleticism. I still have the athleticism to this day. Uh, I, uh, John's seen me run. <laughs> yeah, I can book it when I have to. Uh, I still run. I still stay in shape. 
I don't skate as much as I used to, and I don't play anymore, but I still got the, the physique, and I like to play, and I like to have fun, and still run and chase the kids around. Got to keep my body in shape to do those things. But, yep. um, uh, you know, um, Martin St. Louis is now the head coach of the Montreal Canadiens. Um, I'm interested, but then at the same time, I'm like, this team is riddled with injuries. Yeah. So it's like taking over a fire that won't go out and telling you, put out the fire and then light a new one. Yeah. That it, it, it's a good fire, not a bad fire. You know? Right. Because I can't say that Montreal is a bad team. They're not. They're just injury ridden. Yeah, they are. Um, Martin Luther St. Louis has a heck of a career. NHL Hall of Famer. Um, 1,300 or 1,033 points, 391 goals, 642 assists, 1,134 games played. He played for the Rangers, Tampa Bay Lightning, Calgary Flames. He won a Stanley Cup with the Lightning in 04. In that same season, he also won the Hart Trophy, Art Ross Trophy twice in 2003 and 2012-2013. Um... Uh, beyond that, uh, Ducharme, Ducharme, du, I don't even know how to say his name. He was the fourth coach to be fired this year. Uh, Alain Vigneault, uh, Travis Green, Jeremy Collington, and Paul, uh, um, those were the ones to be fired. Um, Paul Maurice and Joel Quinville have resigned in the implications of the uh, Blackhawks scandal that consistently keeps making the news. Yeah, it does. And and, and <laughs> I'm going to be short and sweet to the punchline on that one. Um, I think they need an entirely new ownership, new start. Um, they need to empty that entire franchise and start from scratch. Right. I do too. Uh, because That's best for them. I saw from the owner, I wouldn't have got this guy to own a lemonade stand. Right. And run PR for me. I do bad enough PR for myself. Good God, I thought I did a bad job this last weekend. <laughs> you know, I'm just saying, I think that when you have a, a, a sexual assault scandal and a reporter asks you an honest question of how are you going to make sure this doesn't happen again? And your reply is, we're not talking about that anymore. All the people that were involved are gone. Um, and then he reiterates with, well, are you going to do anything? You don't work for my team. We're not talking about Kyle Beach anymore. Right. That makes you look guilty that you knew. And then you yeah. lied about not knowing. If that is the case, because Batman's not going to put up with that. Right. However, so we can segue into a fun segment, because I want you guys to comment this part down below. What your thoughts on this are? Because oofka, like I said, got a busy night ahead of us in the news department. But let's get into this a little bit. <laughs> Deadspin. No, nine out of 10, I take Deadspin and I look at it and I go, because <laughs> Deadspin, either they're on or they're off. But this one, this one's a good one. This one's yeah. one where you go. <laughs> <laughs> and you're trying to chuckle at it because they're not the only ones talking about it. Right. 
And that is the Arizona Coyotes. <laughs> oh. Batman. There's an NHL re arena in Quebec ready to go. 15,000 seats. Sold out tickets if you allow an NHL team there. Right. Every game. At least for the first couple of years. Do it now or move this team to Houston. Because I'm sorry to say this. This is how this is going. Well, <laughs> all right. So as we all know, the uh, Arizona Coyotes are being kicked out of their building after this season. Also, maybe even kicked out of Arizona because nope. How do I put it? I, I don't want to use their words because their words are a little harsher than ours. Um, they are being kicked out of their building. And um, according to a lot of people working in there, the word that they used was abhorrent place to work by the employees of the Coyotes. They don't know where their paychecks are coming from. They don't know when they're getting paid. They don't know anything. And as, as they put it, the Coyotes are basically at, like at, acting like college buddies who just got out of college and your buddy's been out and he's got on his feet and he goes, uh, hey, let me uh, couch surf for a little bit uh, while I figure this crap out. You know, we got that friend who's down on his luck and he's like, hey, can I sleep on the couch for a little bit while, while I figure some stuff out? That, that's pretty right. much what the Coyotes are doing to the uh, Arizona State. Um. They're asking to move into Arizona State. Well, they build a multi-purpose athletic facility in Tempe. Which Tempe said that they would be more than willing if the owner's willing to foot the bill. Right. At $1.7 billion. Which is what would need to be put into it. After what they've had with the taxes this year, I don't see it. Right. I don't. And this, this is getting out of hand with the Coyotes. This isn't the first time this has happened. Right. This, uh, the league owned them for a period of time because of bad ownership. Like, how many more times are you going to keep letting this happen? Move the team, give them to a stable team, a city where they can have stable ownership. You know? I mean, it's 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 mind-boggling that this would happen. Right. Not only to start that off, but you're talking about an NHL team playing in an arena with five thousand seats. with no equipment to even perform at the NHL level. Right. 
It would be the equivalent of playing an NHL game in a warehouse. I'm not trying to be mean here. I'm being realistic. It's a bad look for the league. It is. And for the Coyotes fans that are true Coyotes fans, I do feel bad for you. Just like I felt bad way back when, when, what was that, uh, San Antonio lost their AHL team. Right. Those fans had no clue that was coming. Nor was it right that that happened in the first place. Yeah. Because now the Blues have no AHL affiliate after this year. Because right. the looks of it, the Firebird, or the, the, what is that, the, 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 the Thunderbirds? Yeah. Uh, the uh, Springfield. Springfield Thunderbirds, I think they're called or something. I don't pay too much attention to East Coast, but give me a second here. Yes, the Springfield Thunderbirds. Springfield's going under. They don't got no money. But why would you do this? It is a bad look for the NHL. Yeah. According to Arizona Sports uh, website, uh, they have a radio station, 98.7 FM in Arizona. Uh, NHL Batman. Suns have no interest in sharing arena with Coyotes, officially as of four days ago. Right. Not only that, but you're talking about putting $20 million into a college arena that you're only going to play four years in. Right. But at the same time, you know, Glendale's pretty much said, here's the door. Now get out. Boop, kick. The Coyotes are being removed from their building on June 30th by some miraculous miracle. This team found a way into the playoffs and made it to the cup. They wouldn't even be able to finish the playoffs in their building. Right. But here's the kicker. How long do you let this go on? Right. You know, how long? Because Batman's sitting here going, and with the right arena and situation, they would they will be great. But at the end of the day, if there ha- there has to be a temporary accommodation, I think they can create terrific experience for people in a more intimate setting. Why would you build a new arena for a team no one's coming to watch? Right. They have the second lowest attendance in the NHL over the last decade. <coughs> is worse. They have a 1,500,000 000 people on average. Okay, on average, they have 15,000 people. Okay. In an 18,000 seat arena, your year average is 15,000. Yeah. Is 12. The Hershey Bears are getting 7,000. An AHL team on average. Kudos to the Hershey Bears, by the way, for breaking the, the uh, world record, by the way. 
Teddy bear oh, toss. The one. Yep, the teddy bear toss one. 50 something thousand teddy bears. It's just nuts to me. Yeah. But I mean, what more can you do? The Arizona Coyotes probably have one of the coolest logos in all of the NHL. Right. With that coyote. Probably some of the coolest jerseys in the NHL with the jersey the way they have it. And that's just me being unbiased and being truthful. I do like the Coyotes jerseys. Much better than the plain yeah, red too. thing they had. You know? But how much do you... How much more stock do you put in this team? Right. I mean... I've gone through four, through two now, two different things. I'm on my third. I still got one more to go of people talking about this. A nightmare all around. NHL team executives frustrated over Arizona Coyotes plan to play at University Arena. Okay. Now, I want you to all take into consideration two things. All right. The lowest, smallest capacity for an NHL team right now is the Winnipeg Jets at 15,294. Right. The Panther Arena holds 13,000. Yeah. Okay. Our arena can hold. 13,000 on a good day. 9,000 for a basketball game. Uh, I think it, we, uh, the Wave on their championship game, it was complete sellout. They sold, uh, I think it was 13 or 15,000 tickets, including standing room only. They had to sell standing room only tickets. Yeah. Which they do have the capability for that. That building does have a capability for that. Um, but I just wanted to add this in. So they'd be the smallest arena at 5,000. Right. It would be puny compared to NHL standards. The NHL does have a standard. Not only that, the Coyotes would be... <laughs> <coughs> secondary tenant. Yeah. Not even the main tenant. Multiple executives inside the Arizona Coyotes call this plan embarrassing. Right. By the ownership. Not only that, but you got to think of the HHR, hockey related revenue. The NHL doesn't have a profit sharing. Right. How's the owner going to make money off of 5,000 seats? And you got an $82 million cap. To pay off. That's just right now. Not to mention the NHL, HHR had plummeted due to COVID. Right. So we still got the escrow to deal with, where they owe one billion in debt. The players do. Not to mention, if you're Arizona, how are you going to get your your team to even show up to this? And not only that, the cap is going up, I think, by a million dollars this year. Yeah. So now you're going to be paying 83. Right.
assuming that Arizona State's campus would sell out every game. Okay? Mm -hmm. Which I doubt. Right. I doubt. No fans going to want to watch this or go into there to watch this. Say they sell it out. You're talking about less fans than the Hershey Bears and more fans than the Stockton Heat who only get 1,345 per game. Right. <sighs> On average, the Admirals are averaging about 5,600 fans per game. This team has hit an all-time low in attendance at 11,000 per game at the current moment, and it is consistently dropping. The only team to have lower this year is the Buffalo Sabres, which are at 8,626. But that is because they're on ice play. And they know they're not going to be competitive. Right. Favorite fans will come back. Probably COVID restrictions have a small part in that as well. But to sit here and look at this, all right. So let's talk about this. Fewer fans also represents fewer residential purchases including food and beverage, which have a large impact on the team's bottom line. At the end of the day, it all does come down to money, right? Yeah. You got to have make money to spend money. The other problem is, like I was just talking about, what free agents is going to want to come to play in Arizona in a university where they're a second tier, tier team to a college team? Right. So the NHL does have a, a revenue plan. If they sold out every game, and right now <laughs> the team's worth <laughs> is sitting at a lovely five hundred million. I think there's a few billionaires in this world that would buy that team in a heartbeat. Right. And gladly relocate them to a hockey city. Not to mention there's a billionaire sitting in uh, Houston that's looking for a hockey team, if I remember correctly. As me and you have talked about on multiple shows. Yeah. But at this point, if the Arizona State State board does not work out. Right. Um, according to this, the Coyotes and Anticipated move in uh, 2023 from the Gila River to a temporary venue raises a small number of matters that, that the league and the NHLPA will need to work out through. Work through. Ideally, these matters will be sorted out well in advance of next season. Spokesman Jonathan Weatherdon in, in a statement from the NHLPA. Um.
one of the owners said this though. Okay. Imagine you're having a bad year, right? Mm -hmm. And your team's crumbling. And just because a team like the Coyotes are only playing in a 5,000 thing, a 5,000 seat arena, and the NHL has revenue sharing. So they do have revenue sharing. Um, I just saw that on the on the board as well. Um, even if they sold out every game, even if they sold every, all the food they had every game and they did everything, they would still net 32nd in revenue every year. Right. Taking them, the bottom team every year were getting money from revenue sharing and they're being rewarded for playing in an arena. That's not NHL quality. Right. So this is what the NHL owner said. They should be excluded from revenue sharing. Why should they be rewarded? Uh, said an executive of, of one of the teams. They didn't say who, because I don't think that uh, you really want to put that out there at this point just yet. Um, but um, why, why should you uh, reward a team for playing in a smaller building? My owner's pissed about it, and other owners are pissed about it too. I'm, pretty, I'm sure players are pissed about it as well. They're having to give up money and, and have repercussions and not be able to, like, all the financial stuff that goes into hockey. Like, I know that this is not exactly a topic that we like to get on a lot about, but money is everything when it comes to this. Yeah. So when we're talking about money and everything that goes into this, Arizona State does not have these things, Okay. So these are things that have to would have to be built between now and the time that they drop the puck at the new at the college building. Okay. A yep. 15,000 foot square foot facility for practicing. Training areas, team storage, coaching offices. That's just a few of the things. Right. Not only this, improved ice surfacing equipment, replay capabilities, technological aspects to meet NHL standards would all have to be done. <clears throat> building was built for college hockey. So this is not going to work. It's just not going to work. I'm sorry. What what did he say? It may not have to be reality though. The that the NHL sources believes that a workaround could be a place to host Coyotes games there prior to the completion of the NHL facilities allowing them to host games prior to December. So this wouldn't, the building, it would be done in the end of November of 2022. Right. Okay. From that point, they would be able to move in. From there, they have to make the modifications. As a secondary tenant, the main tenant gets to move in, and then you get to move in. Right. So now you're talking about not being in there till December and you still have to do all this. So you're talking about not being able to play at home until January. Yeah. No. No team's going to do this. Where are they going to come up with the money for the travel? NHL owners are responsible for their travel of their team. Along with a few other things. I'm just saying that, like, how do you put it? This is going to cost them $20 million just to get this building up to standards, to be there for four right. years. And you're not even going to make the $20 million back in four years. So you're going to be losing money every year. Yeah. And you're putting $20 million into a college arena. I mean, I guess, John, I should just say, uh, I I've said my part. What do you think? Because, oof.
man. Like I said, this I is a, a delicate and a difficult decision that they're in. I mean, I'd like to see them stay in Arizona, but in all reality, I, I just don't think it can happen. I, I, I agree. I don't see it as a, as a possibility. I mean, anything's possible. Never say never. We learned right. that in wrestling as a kid. Never say never. But right. this is reality. And without money and, and, and with the tax thing earlier in the year, and then now right. you got this, and then you're talking about not being able to play at home until January, just late December, and, and, and you're playing in an arena smaller than your AHL arena? Why right. don't you share the arena with the Tucson Roadrunners? Yeah. <sighs> Because you got to stay near Phoenix, right? You just got to, right? You can't go. Well, we're going to share the arena with our with our AHL team. I could live with that. Yeah, I could. I could one hundred percent live with that. The only weird part will be watching uh, <laughs> around. It literally is a convention center, so <laughs> in the summertime, they take everything out and it becomes a convention center. Yeah. So, I mean, at, at, at what point is it, is it just like, okay, the Roadrunners are successful. Right. They're successful for a reason. You know why that is? Because you've got all the snowbirds there in Tucson, but you keep trying to move into your main areas where all they care about are the Diamondbacks and the Suns. Yeah. They don't care about hockey. That'd be like putting hockey in, like, okay, so say we're going to put another team in Dallas. Nobody's going to go watch that. Hey. You know, we're going to put an NHL team in, in – you know, Mexico, which would actually be kind of cool, but <laughs> I would love to see that. But, you know, I'm just saying hypothetically here. Right. You, know, um, you have an entire fan base of Quebec, Quebec Nordique fans, which me and John both know how much that fan base hates his fan, his team. But you add them in. Look at the revenue you could create as a sale right. of a team, yeah. as 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 a as an ownership revenue. They have an, a brand new building done, ready to go. The Quebec Ramparts selling out games left and right. In that building, you have a, a junior team selling out games in that building every game, and an NHL caliber arena selling them out. Why not? Why not? Why not? Right. The other part you have to ask is Calgary. Same situation. Calgary's got the same situation. But Calgary at least has the pedigree. Yeah. They have a cup. Arizona don't. Arizona don't know winning. And, 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 and it's not their fault. Right. That's one thing I will say. It's not their fault. I can't blame the players. I can't blame the staff. I can't blame anybody but the ownership. Because they only care about the top dollar. They don't care about right. anything beyond that. And for sometimes I'm grateful for what the admirals, the Preds have. Grateful for what the, the league, some of these league owners have. Uh, Colorado, uh, you know, steady ownership. The, the Wild has steady ownership. You know, these teams, they, they came in, they were expansion teams, they succeeded. They have, you know, the, the Vegas Knights, another one. Um, Seattle's doing well. Um, you know, it's just, you know, the Seattle's now talking about bringing back the Sonics. Oh, right. and I love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. But, you know, you're, you're talking about this volatile situation of, do we have another Winnipeg situation? 
if you remember that, John, when Winnipeg, um, when Atlanta moved from Winnipeg, like it was like what two weeks and boom, boom. Right. No, um, we're taking the team from the ownership. <laughs> teams up for auction. Like because they didn't have a building to play in. Yeah. And like, come June thirtieth, if they don't have an answer. You've got till the deadline to sell or find an answer. Right. Or till the draft. That's what I give them. Like a week before the draft. Because if you are going to sell the team, at least let the team, you know, have the time to jerseys made. <laughs> Adidas, get out. <laughs> Adidas, get to work. Uh-huh. <laughs> Jeez. Like, that's the other part you got to take into consideration, too. Like if this all falls through and nothing works out, and I mean we're sitting here in February, what June's three months away? Three months away. Huh? Four. Four months away. Four months away. Four months. What of uh, was it? Three months and twenty days or something like that. So June thirtieth. Because gotta take the days into consideration too. I guess. But I mean, I would expect this to be done by season end. If this is not done by season end, there's no way it's getting done. Right. And I think that's like, I really start the full court press trade deadline. Cause then you're like month left of hockey. It's a month left at that. Yeah. Point. And if it's not, if you, if we're still sitting here going, Oh, you know, there's a, a lot to go into this. You know, um, like I knew this part was going to be long. I've been avoiding talking about this because it's such a volatile situation. It's so right. like, it's like taking a wet paid t- piece of, of tissue paper and then like I would put like a penny on it and just watch it fall through. That's how I feel like the situation is, is like the pennies just hanging there like ready to fall, the threads unraveling. And, you know, um, as much as I've enjoyed the Coyotes, my mom lived there for five years and said that she didn't meet a single Coyotes fan while living in Glendale. And my mom's a hockey fan. She wouldn't even go to games. They were tickets for $2. They were giving away season tickets for free and nobody wanted them. Yeah. What's that say? Like, I mean, your team's not bad at the time. At the time, they were okay. Right. Like, they were our verge of playoff, verge of not playoff kind of thing. So you're still except maybe on another way. Ontario, they're going to rebound. They've got a good young core. And once they figure out that goaltending situation, they will be good. But I understand it. It's 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 just this situation. But we're gonna move on here because I think we've went on on this one a little too long. Yeah. Um. Just to wrap it up. So here's here's the sum of it all. If they move in here, they won't be able to play at home until late December. Um. The NHL then has to inspect the building. And if they're not happy with it, they can say, no, you can't play there. Find somewhere else to play. <sighs> um, and you would have to put $20 million into a building you're not going to make $20 million in, in four years. Right. Because unless you're charging... All right, let's see. We got 82 games, glass seats, $1,000. Okay. You sell out every game. Not happening. Right. It's it's just not happening. Um, the Board of Regiments... Um, 
said that it, they de- the document does confirm that the teams would play their home games there in 2022, 23, <sighs> 23, 24, 25, 24, 25. So it'd only be there for three years, not four. And they would have to get a building built in that time. Right. Not only that, but they've been denied their building in mm-hmm. Tempe twice already. And now they're about to go for the third, putting in a $1.7 billion offer, which then the ownership has to come up with that money. Right. And they have to have that money right then and there. It's not like you could just pay them randomly. So I, I just don't see that happening. But let's move on to a new uh, our our next topic, which is the AHL, because we got to get going here. It's uh, after midnight, so happy Thursday, every wait. Is it Thursday or is it Wednesday? Thursday. It's Thursday, bro. Okay, I don't know what day it is anymore. <laughs> I know I'm tired too. All right, happy Thursday, everybody. But this is something that me and John have had um, conversations on. Um, um, twice. All right. So these are two conversations that um in the in this in this article that we're going to be focusing on. One of them, avoiding the Calder Cup playoffs from stretching too deep into the summer, right. because um. Our season ends April 30th. And you're talking, you want them done by June 30th at the latest. Not much time off for the young ones that are in there. Right. But we're trying to get back to normal here, and understandably so. The league has set a date that the the playoffs will not go any further than June 30th. If they are having it, if the cup series has not been awarded, there will be no cup awarded. Pretty much stating that if COVID rampages the entire league again, necessarily, they won't want to keep doing this. But I mean, and at a fair conclusion of that, I don't want to see any more of this rescheduling. Right. Um, um, I want to tip my cap, even though I'm not wearing them, to them with the on-ice female officials. Some of them have done a really great job. Some of them have irritated me. But I guess it's just somebody with uh, uh, black and white stripes with an orange band that just, as a hockey fan. (laughs) Yeah. And probably as players, too. Something me and John are heavily excited about. Me and John have talked about this. Um, let's just... Let's just say this. And it is about... <laughs> Dang, time this happens in the AHL. Unified, 72-game, regular season schedule. Every team plays it. Right. Because let's be honest here, okay? Everyone else in the league was playing 76 games beforehand. Right. Including them behind me. The guys on the West Coast were playing 68. If you're willing to play 76 games, you're willing to play 72. If you're willing to play 68 games, you're willing to play 72. Right. Because it's what? Two extra home games and two extra road games. Really. Either on the negative side or on the positive side. Right. But either way, an equal league Now, the only other part 
will be interesting to see as how they integrate Coachella Valley into all this mess. Coachella does not have an arena yet. Right. Nor is it built or being built. And they're supposed to jump in next year. Yeah. Okay, there will be 10 teams in the Pacific next year. All right, in the Pacific Division. Yeah. All right. 10 teams. There are seven in the Central, seven in the North, eight in the Atlantic, and seven teams out of the 10 from the Pacific Division will make the playoffs. Right. So this is how this, this is already done, voted in, done, done, boom, in. So these are all things that are set in stone. San Jose Barracudas are getting a new arena. Good for them. All right. The AHL is looking into um, two games a week on the NHL network with TNT taking over most of the uh, NHL coverage. Right. And, uh, and TBS and ABC and all those others. <sighs> I think that to be correct. Um, I think that that would be a good idea. So if you get two games a week from, you know, one from the East, one from the you know, one from one conference and one from another conference every week, giving these teams national exposure, getting the young talent a chance to be looked at by the national exposure. Right. Um, I think that would be a great thing. Um, I still think that local TV deals are a big part. Right. Um, as far as AHL TV and Genius Sports go, they're, they're deal together to make AHL TV happen. To Genius Sports, I have one thing to say to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You made AHL TV affordable. Um, you know, Um, so any more you want to check out this uh, article, I will be putting it in our uh, description. Uh, that'll be the only article I put in our description, as well as I will be putting it in our uh, comments as well. Um, I think that, you know, um, I take that into consideration when, when I look at um, how the AHL is, is reflecting um, yeah. and, and how they're moving and doing business. Um, I think that me and John can agree here that they're moving in the right direction compared to where they were going with the last um, president of the league. Right. Um, I think that as long as they can be keep doing the community activism or uh, uh, equal opportunity, 
um, you know, um, uh, uh, the work that they do in the communities, um, not just the teams, but the league itself. Um, I remember, um, you know, when Nashville got hit from a tornado, everyone came together as a hockey community and, and, and really helped out the city of Nashville. I know that when you look at certain things and, and look at the hockey community, that it is a very strong community. And I think that we will be able to move forward through anything that you put in front of us. <sighs> like I said, we're both tired, but we got a little more to go for you. I'm really exhausted here, but I got to finish. Because if you can't finish what you start, it ain't worth doing. No, I got to step away from the camera for just a second, man, or I'm not going to sleep tonight. <laughs> All righty, man. Um, on that note, folks, I will pause till he comes back so you guys will see a little bit of graphic delay. Uh, sorry, folks, we had some uh, things to do. Uh, we have to take our, our old people medicines. <laughs> <laughs> So that we could go night night. Otherwise, we, yeah. me and Sean stay awake all night and we sit here doing videos like this for you folks. And then you end up with like a four hour YouTube video. <laughs> um, but no, um, I wanted to uh, congratulate Sean Horkoff playing uh, 1,800 career games. Now will be named the new assistant general manager for the Grand Rapids Griffin. Oh. Welcome to the division, Sean Horkoff. All righty, league division leaders. We're going to start from the top here. Atlantic division. Um, Hartford Wolfpack, 32, or 40 games played, 22, 12, and 4. They're in first place. Um. Hershey Bears, uh, they're 23, 13, 3 and 3. Uh, Springfield Thunderbirds are 23, 14, 5 and 1. Providence Bruins are 18, 12, 3 and 3. Um, the Charlotte Checkers are 22, 17, 2 and 0. Um, the Wilkesbury Scranton Penguins. Um, 18 and 18, 18, 18, 2 and 3. They are sixth in their division. Uh, Lehigh Valley Phantom is uh, 15, 17, 6 and 2. Uh, Bridgeport Sound Tigers are 16, 19, 4 and 4, putting them under 500. Uh, so the leaders in that division are uh, the uh, Hartford Wolfpack. Leaders in the North Division are the Utica Comets. Um, I only have one thing to say about the Utica Comets. Go back to being the Utica Devils. Mm. You're a minor league. You're a minor league affiliate of the Devils. Your color scheme matches. You were the Utica Devils at one point. Go back. Right. Okay. It'll be okay. Not to mention the U with the horn coming out of the tail. Really cool. I love that logo. Old school. Yeah. Um. That and the Detroit Vipers old IHL logo. Oof. Oh, yeah. That thing was beautiful. There's a lot of old IHL logos. If you actually go look at the old IHL logos, they're really cool. Um, some oh, of yeah. them are still active today. Um, like the, uh, um, um, they haven't changed it much, but the Utah Grizzlies and Orlando Solar Bears pretty much have the same logo. Right. Still for color schemes, but the same logo. Um, so the Utica Comets uh, lead the North Division with uh, 27, 7, and 5. Uh, Toronto is at second place with 21, 12, 2, and 1. Uh, the Rochester Americans are 23, 15, 2, and 1. Uh, Laval Rockets are 18, 3, 13, 3, and 0. Um, the Belleville Senators are at 500 up evenly. Uh, they're 18, 18, 0, and 0. So they haven't won or lost in a shootout. They're lost in overtime or a shootout, but they're 18 and 18. That's actually kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, the Syracuse yeah. Crunch are 17, 17, 3, and 1, which puts them at 500. And the Cleveland Monsters are 13, 19, 5, and 3. They're 1, 8, and 1 in their last 10. Ouch. Wow. 
Uh, the Chicago Wolves lead the Central Division with a 27, 8, 4, and 2 record. Um, the Manitoba Moose are at 25, 12, 2, and 1, putting them second. Third in the division, but not by much. As they have the same amount of games as us to be played. They are 19, 17, 2, and 2 as the Iowa Wild. The Milwaukee Admirals are um, have 32 games left, and they are 21, 19, 2, and 2. Uh, the Rockford Ice Hogs are 17, 16, 3, and 1, uh, with 35 games played, plenty of hockey left for them. Um, Grand Rapids Griffins, they have 40 games uh, in and 36 left. Uh, they are 16, 17, 5, and 2. So plenty of hockey left for them to be played as well. Uh, as well as the Texas Stars have 36 games remaining with a 13, 15, 5, and 3 record. Um, uh, in the Pacific Division, the Stockton Heat lead with a 26, 7, and 3, 7, 3, and 1 record. Um, the Ontario Reign have a 24, 8, and 3, 8, 3, and 2 record, who are nipping at their heels every week. It's like a back and forth between the top two. Yeah. And they um, just... uh, the Bakersfield Condors, um, they have uh, 18, 9, 4, and 3 record. Um, the uh, Henderson Summer Knights are uh, 20. 12, 2, and 1. Uh, they are fourth in the division, the Colorado Eagles. Um, they are at 21, 13, 3, and 3, uh, sitting at fifth. Um, the Abbotsford Canucks are sitting at 17, 15, 3, and 1. At sixth, the San Diego Gulls are sitting at 14, 22, and 0. Uh, that seventh place, the Tucson Roadrunners are 14, 21, and two, 14, 21, two, and two overtime losses and one shootout loss. The San Jose Barracudas are 14, 24, 1, and 0 oh in their division, rounding it off last. The league leader is, I believe, the Chicago Wolves, actually. Uh, the the uh, Stockton Heat at a uh, seven. 0.757 win percentage. So oh. they're winning 75% of their games. Uh, yeah. The Chicago Wolves are winning 73% of their games, not counting the factor that they are 4, 2, 3, and 1 in their last 10 games. That is the worst record amongst the top 10. So they keep playing like that. They won't be in the top 10 much longer. Right. So we'll see where that begins. The Admirals sit 19th in the league, just for all our Admirals fans that wanted to know. Um, statistically, the uh, top player in the league right now for the NH or for the AHL is Andrew Polchagansky of the Chicago Wolves with 53 points, 20 goals, 33 assists. And he is an AHL contract along with Stefan Dosen, who has 21, uh, 42 points sitting at fourth for the Wolves, and C.J. Smith sitting at 42 points for the Wolves as well. Right. Um, for you Admirals fans, we have Cole Smith sitting at 16th with 35 points. Rocco Grimaldi sitting at 34 points at 20. Um, your top goaltenders in the league, in the AHL right now are, uh, hang on a second here, Top goaltender is Akura Shamid. Shamid. He has 14 games played, 1.65 goals against with 11 wins, one loss, and two overtime losses. With the same percentage of 94.4. He also has two shutouts. Um, Alex Lyon, add to a new. Uh, Mac and Um The Wolves have three goaltenders in the top 20. That's just not right. Right. Um, 
the Ambrose Connor Ingram sit at the uh, 13th, uh, Hunter or Adam Huska is 12th, uh, former Admiral Troy Grossnick is 11th, uh, Zane McIntyre um, is sitting at 10th, uh, Charlie Lindgren uh, is sitting at 9th, uh, Nico Dawes is sitting at 8th for uh, Utica. Uh, Phoenix Cop Copley is seventh. Joey Decord for uh, Charlotte is sitting at sixth. Mikel Bourdain is fifth. Atu, Atu McAniemi is sitting at 14th. Uh, Dustin Wolf for the Stockton Heat is sitting at third. Alex Lyon for the Chicago Wolves is sitting at second. And uh, Kara Schmid for the Utica Comets. I want to keep saying Devils for whatever reason. Oh. Um, outside of that, uh, anything else as far as players and really and stuff like that go? Um, this week's AHL Player of the Week is Michael Carcone. Um, having eight goals during a two-game visit to San Diego. Wow. Yikes. Um, so that's all I got there. Um, update on the ECHL. I'm just going to do league-wide here. Um, Top of the league is the Toledo Walleye. Uh, they are at um, uh, 28, 10, 1, and 2. The Reading Royals are 20, not two, uh, are second. Uh, Utah Grizzlies are third. Jacksonville Icemen the, are fourth. Um, Atlantic Gladiators are fifth. Idaho Steelheads are sixth. New Fundland Growlers are seventh. Uh, the Trey Rivers Lions are eighth. The Florida Everblades are ninth. Uh, the uh, Orlando Solar Bears are tenth. Going off their records is kind of hard. I'm running out of oxygen. <laughs> mm. um, the uh, Kalamazoo K Wings, who were part of the IHL back in the day, along with the Solar Bears. And let's see, let's just see if I can name off some IHL teams here. Uh, Utah Grizzlies, Orlando Solar Bears, Kalamazoo K-Wings, Fort Wayne Comets. Uh, the Norfolk Admirals at one point were in the uh, AHL, but uh, the rest of them, Adirondack Thunder, were in Adirondack when they were known as the Adirondack Phantoms. So um, that should uh, wrap that part up mostly um oh yeah the fort wayne comments are 12th wheeling nailers 13th cincinnati cyclones our former affiliate um are 14th um the uh tulsa oilers are 15th rapid city rush are 16th maine mariners are 17th allen americans 18th uh the um kansas city mavericks are 19th Greenfield Swamp Rabbits are 20th, Indy Fuel 21st, Warshire Railers 22nd, Adirondack Thunder 23rd, Iowa Heartlanders 24th, Wichita Thunder 25th, Norfolk Admirals are 26th, and the South Carolina Stingrays are 27th. The Norfolk Admirals have lost their affiliation as well with the Chicago Wolves and the um, the uh, Hurricanes. Um, they are no longer selling the players there from what I've seen. Um, I've seen players being moved um, elsewhere, which is confusing the ever love out of me. Right. In transactions for this week, or for today at least. Um, uh, the only thing of note for Everblades fans is uh, with the return of Jordan Sambrook. Yeah. Which is a much needed return for them. 
Um, so this weekend, the Admirals return on Friday. The Everglades return on Friday, I believe. I'm going to make sure that I check everything. Yeah, make sure on that. I can't give you a positive answer. All right, here we go. All right, so we've got the Admirals on Thursday, and the Everblades and Admirals are, no, to, today we have a day off, so that's why we're, we're able to work so late for you folks. Um, so um, uh, tomorrow we have the, uh, tomorrow literally, because it's past midnight here. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, we have the Admirals at Texas, and uh, Saturday we have the uh, Everblades, uh, playing in Orlando, the Admirals at Texas, and the Nashville Predators taking on the Winnipeg Jets. So those are shows coming up on our Facebook page. Please check those out. Um, our Facebook page has a ton of graphics on it as well. If you love wallpapers and you love the Admirals logos, the Preds logos, or the Everblades logos, go check out our page. We have a ton of wallpapers up there. Um, one of these days, I'm actually going to get up the uh, patience to go make an entire folder of just wallpapers um so one day i will get that done as well um uh one other thing uh i did want to bring um to an attention really quickly is the factor for everyone uh coming up this weekend um me and john will be live on facebook so if you want to see what we're talking about over there we will be live on facebook uh saturday evening um time to be determined yeah uh, that's basically word for whenever we feel like it <laughs> <laughs> um because uh, we're starting to do that too um, we're doing shows whenever we feel like it <laughs> Because um, hockey is important, but family first. Right. Um, I and um, hockey is a part of who we are, me and John. But uh, our families come first, and there are certain days where we need to uh, um, do something. And uh, I've got to go, guys. I have a centipede about that long running across the floor in my living room that I have to go kill. <laughs> mm. so, later, folks.